baseball is a slow game compared to most sports but the action inside Coors Field will seem positively breathless on Friday next to the logjam created by tens of thousands of fans streaming into lower downtown for the Colorado Rockies home opener against the Los Angeles Dodgers on April 5th. Long before the first pitch at 2.10 p.m., Lodo bars and restaurants will throw open their doors with food and drink specials as live bands, street vendors and others add to the circus-like atmosphere. That also means congestion around the sold-out Coors Field capacity, 50,000, with slower traffic, less parking and other headaches for downtown workers and visitors. As of 6 p.m., Wednesday, the National Weather Service forecasted a high of 69 degrees with partly sunny skies and a slight 10% chance for thunder showers on Friday, with a west-southwest wind around 5 miles per hour turning calm in the afternoon. In terms of street closures, the big one to watch all weekend will be Blake Street between 20th and 22nd Streets, the most heavily walked route into Coors Field, according to a spokeswoman for Denver's Office of Special Events. Expect those blocks to be shut down at 9 a.m. Friday and reopened after pedestrian traffic clears in the afternoon, likely after the game ends. It also shuts down three hours before most games in general. Josh Pugh of Denver shows his allegiance on his mohawk during the Colorado Rockies home opener at Coors Field on April 7, 2017 in Denver. Los Angeles Dodgers fan Jimmy Barrow, right, shakes his hand despite their differences. The Rockies' annual opening day fest returns to 21st and Blake Streets with family-friendly activities from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Friday. The city is not reporting any other major closures or detours for the weekend, but if you're familiar with GPS-driven smartphone apps such as Google Maps or Waze, both of which provide real-time traffic information, keep them handy. Whether or not you're going to the game, it's helpful to know Coors Field will open its parking lots at 9 a.m. Friday. That means heavier-than-usual traffic flowing into the lots through at least noon, when the ballpark officially unlocks its entry gates. Parking traffic is expected to follow along along the main routes of 22nd Street or Park Avenue, to and from the nearby I-25 and I-70 interchanges. Coors main lots A and B can be entered at 22nd and Wazi Streets, 27th and Blake Streets, or 33rd and Blake Streets. Avoid those intersections if you're worried about backup cars at the tail end of morning rush hour, or the early part of the afternoon rush. Colorado Rockies center fielder Charlie Blackman. Parking is sold out online but still available by calling the Rockies parking line 303-762-5437 or paying on-site. Be warned that off-site, opening day parking can run as much as $50 in the private, surrounding surface lots, while on-site parking tends to start at $17. Rockies officials expect the longest waits outside Coors Field to be 30 minutes before and 30 minutes after the opening pitch. For the home opening weekend, there will be an additional ballpark entrance on 20th Street between Gates D and E, which also opens at noon, according to the Rockies, making for seven total. More, Coors Field bad policy, fun facts and more even with fans increasingly using light rail, bike and ride sharing services, foot traffic in the area will be near constant over the weekend as the Rockies play the Dodgers to Sunday. Expect nearby RTD routes, and the light rail lines that serve the 16th and Stout Station, the closest stop to Coors Field to run slower than usual, particularly the D, F and H lines on Union Station, which welcomes the A and B lines. And don't forget about the pedestrian thoroughfare of the 16th Street Mall and its free, day-long mail ride, which ferries people between Civic Center Station and Union Station. Cyclists will likely stream toward Gates A and E at Coors Field, where bike parking is offered, and across 22nd and Blake Streets, so keep your eyes peeled for wobbly two-wheelers. Numerous ongoing construction projects have eaten up sidewalks, shoulders and bike lanes throughout downtown and the nearby River North Art District, including a massive project underway in the former, west lot bounded by Wazi and Winecoop Streets and 19th and 20th Streets. As ever, be patient and give yourself time to get around while keeping an eye on the city's famously brazen, unapologetic jaywalkers.